In the previous video, I showed you how .NET will not automatically redirect to the latest and greatest version of your assembly when that assembly is strongly named or signed. In this video, I want to show you how to get .NET to redirect to the uh, proper latest and greatest if that is your actual goal. Same thing as we had before in previous videos. We have cow, moo, main class, that sort of thing. Let's compile cow. C sharp compile. Actually, let's list the contents of the directory. Just to show you we're starting with a clean slate again. We have our input file. We have the config file we'll use a little later, and then I have my strong name key. C sharp compiler, please target a library. The output file is the farm assembly. I must sign it. Key file. Jamie's key dot strong name key. If I, if we don't sign it, then .NET will only bind by the basic assembly name. The input file is mainclass.cs. So we're converting all this code to an assembly. List the con list the contents of the directory. Farm assembly. So nothing new and exciting there quite yet. Let's make main class here. Control K U C sharp compiler. Please reference the farm assembly. And the input file will be mainclass.cs. And now we have mainclass.exe, which relies on the farm DLL version 1. Okay, the strongly named farm assembly. Let's, let's update the farm assembly, just like we did in the previous video, to the latest and greatest version of 2. Version 2 here. And I know I haven't talked about all four of these numbers. These are essentially numbers. That's all they are. There's conventions to using them. But however you want to use them is up to you. Ideally, the larger the number, the larger the overall number, the better the version. But sometimes people release new versions of stuff that breaks. Let's use the up arrow and find our command again to say, hey, compile this assembly main class. I want version 2. It's moo version 2. We're going to make a new farm assembly version 2, signed with Jamie's key, same deal, just like we did in previous videos. Now, when I re execute main class.exe, it bombs saying, hey, I'm trying to find version 1, and yeah, there's a version 2 hanging out here, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for version 1. Why am I even considering the version? Because you signed it. You signed it. In fact, I'm actually... We're going to need that public key token a little later in the video, so let me mark this. Hit enter. Let me paste it over here. And we'll come back to that in a second. Well, now we have the latest and greatest farm, and if we did not sign this assembly, then .NET would have bound just by the name, and it would use the farm, but it is signed, and suppose I don't want to compile or recompile my main class.exe. I, I could recompile main class.exe against this latest and greatest version 2 of farm, and all would be well, but I don't want to go to the effort of recompiling this main class.exe. I have it pushed out on a server or something. I, I, I don't want to deal with that headache. I feel comfortable with it there, nice and stable. I just want to have it bind to version 2 of the farm assembly. Well, have no fear. That's actually not too difficult. We have to use the config file we've set up a few videos ago. Remember, the config file must have an identical name to the executable for which it is for, so .NET will locate this config file suffixed with a dot config. I have the config file open right here. And just as we did with the probing paths, we have to say, hey, during runtime, we're going to set up some assembly binding rules. And again, we have to set up the default namespace for XML. And that's going to be URN colon schemas. I don't know why they don't automatically complete this this uh, XML namespace for us, but assembly dot version one like so. And if you're not familiar with XML namespaces, they're much like namespaces in our regular programming, except namespaces can be kind of whatever you want. I mean, you can kind of put whatever you want here. It has to be a URI, I believe, and you can look up what URIs are. But basically, every element inside of this tag, including the tag itself, is now in this namespace. Nothing real difficult there. It's just .NET is looking specifically for this namespace. So it's critical that that namespace is present for the behavior to work correctly. Now remember, we're doing main class .exe .config, the config file for the main class executable assembly and we need to indicate that we have a dependent 
Dependent assembly. We have depend on an assembly. And the assembly, assembly identity, where you have to specify the identity of the assembly that we depend on. What assembly is that? Do you remember? Its its name is farm, not farm.dll, but farm. The .dll again is only when we're trying to locate the assembly. After that, it's just the basic name, which is farm. And the public key token is equal to this value. I copied and pasted off off to the right here. So public key token is that. When you are trying to bind, when we basically I depend on an assembly with, oh, did I kill my farm? I depend on an assembly named farm with this public key token and I want you to do a binding redirect. Redirect the the version that you're binding to. The old version is good old version 1.0.0.0. The new version is 2.0.0.0. Let me put that on a new line. I also have hope you have your YouTube set up to high definition. Okay, one more time. We depend on the farm with this public key token. When you're looking for version 1, instead look for version 2. And we're doing this all with a config file. It's not requiring us to recompile our main class.exe. Now, I actually saved this file, but just one more time. I'm going to highlight all this, control KC, to comment it out and save it. Let me execute main class.exe. It bombs. It can't find version 1. Now, I'm going to control Z in this window, save it and run main class.exe and instead of looking for version 1 it will instead look for version 2 which it will not find in the GAC remember with strong name assemblies it will look in the GAC first but then it will come to our local directory and find version 2 all is well all is good now let me point out one thing it was up to us as the consumers of the forest farm assembly to come in here and edit our config file Okay, this is our code. This is the farm's code. We had to come edit our config file. Right? In the next video, we're going to talk about how us as the publishers, the farm can say, you know what, I'm giving you a latest and greatest version 2, and that's the one you should use. Don't, 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 don't use version 1, use version 2. So that's called the publisher policy file. We'll examine that in the next video.